Okay, so I've got the camera rigged up now, so hopefully you can see this all pretty well and I don't have to shoot it all again. Um, I was just uh, kind of going through and inspecting things and putting oil in all the little oil holes that I can find. A lot of them clearly have crap in them and uh, it'll all need to be taken apart and cleaned out, but... Uh, but that's kind of one of the first things I like to start doing anyways is I'll start dumping oil in all the places in the machine that need oil. It makes, makes it easier to take things apart. Uh, so a lot of times things will get stuck because oil gets in and it just kind of dries out and gunks everything up. So if you get a little penetrating oil in there, softens everything up and uh, things start to move a little bit nicer. I had a... Uh, one of the levers on my gearbox was kind of jammed up and I got a little oil on it and it moves great now. So, Anyhow, the uh, point of this video was, uh, like I started to say, I pulled the gear guards off the machine just to inspect the gears and uh, check out this two-speed bat gear, how it works. And I thought it was kind of interesting, so uh, I, I'm going to show you how this two-speed bat gear works. Uh, so right now it's all locked together, back gear's disengaged, and that gives you your first three speeds. There's a spring-loaded pin here in the bull gear, which is uh, kind of nice. A lot of them just have a little detent, or in the old south bend over there, the 13 inch, it's got a little bolt you have to loosen and slide and tighten it again. But you pull that pin out and then it it's got a little pin that rides in a slot and I'll show that in more detail but anyhow so now we've unlocked our cone there's a pin plunger also that locks the back gear in and out which is kind of kind of nice uh, if you watch my other videos you will have seen uh, the back gear actually pop out <laughs> on the uh, 13 inch south bend when I was kind of pushing things so all right so back gear is engaged and now we have a fast back gear which gives us you know three more speeds so we're up to six speeds now and uh, we slide that gear over and now we have a slow back gear and that gives us another three speeds so we got a nine speed lathe here. Kind of neat. Uh, <clears throat> the only damage I could find so far was I've got two chipped teeth here and one here on just this gear. All the other gears are fine, which is good news. And I may be able to find a replacement gear and fit it on there if that turns out to be a standard you know, off the shelf thing I could get maybe from Boston Gear uh, or one of the other places that makes gears. Uh, and if it's not, it could be repaired eventually by uh, a few different methods, you know, that could be brazed in and, and remachined. Or, uh, or you can put pins in there and weld it in and remachine it. And, a couple of different ways that can be done or a new gear could even possibly be made so uh, but it will work everything meshes and you know you probably just have to go go easy on it if you're gonna run the fast back gear so you don't break any more teeth and which would which always runs the possibility of damaging mating gears anyhow so that's how this two-speed back gear works uh, now I'll bring the camera in around and I'll show how this little neat little plunger works to lock and unlock the uh, the bull gear from the cone. Okay, so hopefully you'll be able to see what's going on here. I'm gonna unlock the take the back gear out now and. Go ahead and all right. So we have this little plunger here, and you can see 
it's spring loaded. Now, there's a little pin here in the side and a little protruding collar, and there's a, a short notch where this will rest so that it stays out and stays in position, and then a long notch which will allow the pin to go through and, and lock into the uh, cone here. So, to make this, to, to relock it, all you have to do is turn this, and you see it's just clicked into that notch there, and then you can simply turn the cone, and that will pop in automatically. That's kind of a convenient little way to do it, you know. Uh, that's one thing I don't like about the 13-inch South Bend is that you always have to grab a wrench. <laughs> and you got to get in there, and you got to wrench the uh, little bolt out and slide it over in towards the spindle, and then you've got to tighten that back up so it doesn't try to re-engage while you're running back gear and, you know, cause some trouble. So, and, uh, anyways, there we go. So it's really easy to engage and disengage, you know, and just to... To disengage it, you just pull it out and turn till it clicks into the little notch, and you're free. And now you're re-engaged. Okay, next I'll show you what I found on the end gears. Well, I have to hold the camera for this one because I don't have a good place to set it. So uh, I'm trying to work out the uh, problem with that. A lot of people don't like the shaky videos, but anyhow. So we have a pretty standard reverse tumbler here, but uh, the odd thing is, is that one of these gears is larger than the other. I don't think that that was a later modification and why the why anybody would have it be desirable to have the feed at a different rate because that's going to change the feed rate uh, in one direction rather than the other. We've got a little tightening nut here which is typical and then we have uh, another spring loaded plunger and we have a neutral position to totally disengage the gears and then of course uh, or reverse or forward. I haven't really determined all that yet. Anyhow, so that's how that works. And here's the little pin plunger on the on the back gear that helps it stay in position. So something that's not uh, not really typical on other lathes that I've seen. Having this little shelf here on the top of the gearbox is very, very handy, by the way. Okay, next we're gonna explore the, well, I think we'll, we'll take a look at this uh, gearbox, con this gear control here. What this does is this engages your lead screw and disengages the lead screw. That's all it does. On a lot of lathes, you'll have a little sliding collar, very similar to what we have on the back gear to do that, but uh, they decided to take it a step further so you didn't have to grab some greasy old collar and put a nice lever in there with a clutch. So, I haven't looked inside here yet. I have a feeling that clutch may be worn or there's something going on with that, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, oh, also interestingly, uh, I've found that this has been repaired pretty nicely is the braze repair at some point and somebody at one time busted the gear guard and very neatly welded it back together and they cleaned the weld up on the outside and painted it so it's practically undetectable kind of nice it's interesting to see old repairs and the way they did them uh, and actually, I did something, uh, if you'll remember, on my little 9-inch south bend over there. Uh, and you'll notice the gear guard is not on it. It was broken when I got it, and I did have it welded and the outside ground just exactly as they did here. 
uh, and I've yet to go ahead and paint it and put it on. So uh, I just figure, don't stick your fingers in there and you'll be okay. All right, next I'm gonna show the apron controls. Okay, so here's our apron. And uh, well, you can tell we got a lot going on here. So let's start with this. Well, that's just the hand wheel. Pretty typical. Uh, and then we've got this little knob over here, you know. And well, what's that do? So you, you could pop this knob out. And uh, there we go. pop this knob out and then totally disengages your uh, all of your feed gears and everything and uh, apparently what I've been told is this is a uh, it's for using your threading you can disengage and you don't have this wheel coming around and then going boop, and for doing a really accurate thread uh, seems kind of not necessary to me uh, especially considering how well balanced this wheel is, you know. <laughs> you look at it and it's... I mean, that's not going to cause any issue, I don't think. But in any case, that's what they did. And it's kind of kind of interesting. Uh, so we'll re-engage that. Just sliding it in. And all that is, is on the end of that shaft there is the... Uh, is your pinion that engages with your rack. And it's just sliding that out. Um, here we have our clutches. And of course we have one for the, uh, one for long feed. And then we have one for our cross feed. So, and that all moves right now because this lever is in neutral. Uh, and what this lever does is this, you know, reverses your feeds, which is kind of nice to have on a bigger lathe so you don't have to go to the end and, and change the tumbler. Uh, so that's what all that does. Pretty standard. We have our half nuts here, and they will only engage when the uh, selector lever for the feeds is in neutral. So we do have a nice safety lockout built in. A lot of older lathes of this vintage, especially the smaller lathes, did not have that. Uh, my South Bend does not have it. So it is actually possible on the South Bend to engage the half nuts while you're under power feed. Uh, why you would do that, there's no reason to do that, but uh, if you did do that, by accident, not paying attention, it will lock up the gear train and, and you'll you'll break something. <laughs> so you don't want to do that. Uh, you know, we've got some oilers, one here, one here, one here. Now, one thing that is still a mystery to me, and I'm hoping you can see that in the camera, is what this thing here is all about. Uh, and then there's this screw here. I don't know if this is supposed to turn and maybe that this is some sort of a automatic stop for the uh, for the cross feed that would be nice to have or it's it's something else entirely uh, or it could be some sort of a modification that was made at some point in this late of life I'm not sure uh, I'll figure out more as I do more research on these machines but uh, anyways, I think that about does it uh, for the controls on these. I'll, I'll update in the future when I've figured out what the heck that is. Uh, you know, I've just been kind of going over the machine and assessing it today. Uh, not trying to dig too far into it at this time. Uh, but I will, I do plan to at least drop the apron and uh, get in there and get that all nice and cleaned out. Uh, and I may do something about that gearbox. 
but I'm finding everything to be in pretty damn decent shape. It's still got, you know, when I, when I even first looked at this lathe, I, I went and I cranked the uh, carriage over and there was still oil under it. Uh, you know, I clean a lot of the settled dirt and stuff off of the uh, ways and I'm seeing lots of scraping. So that's good. I do think the gears in here are a little noisy and I've seen some chips on this machine in places where there normally really shouldn't be chips, which indicates that probably some compressed air was being used. So I'll have to go through and carefully clean everything out. In fact, there is a chip in my end gears, I noticed when I was, uh, not a chip in the tooth, but a, a chip from machining has gotten in there uh, because I noticed a little click as I was turning the headstock over by hand. Uh, so all those gears and everything is going to be clean and, uh, you know, new oil. Uh, I really kind of don't want to paint the machine, but as I go through, I will probably polish up and do the bright work and everything like I did on my, on my 13 inch South Bend and, uh, just spiff it up a little bit. And, I, you know, yeah, I, I am very tempted to paint it, but, uh, you know, paint on a tool like this, I'm going to use this machine. It's always going to get messed up anyways. So, for the time being, I think we're probably going to end up leaving it because we've got enough else to do with taking apart the various parts and cleaning and oiling everything uh, without without having to strip paint and repaint. You, you know, you doubled the job right there. Uh, and I somewhat like the older look anyways. Um, probably pretty soon I'm gonna go ahead and I'll pull the bearing caps off of the headstock and get a look at my spindle, but I have no reason to think that there's anything wrong with that spindle. Uh, I just wanna I want to pull those caps, I want to pull the oilers. One of the oilers is, is uh, the gaskets in it are shot. I filled it up with oil and it, it just drained right out through the glass on the bottom. And there is a little chip in that glass, but it's at the top. I don't think it's going to affect anything. Regardless, they need to be taken off and, and everything cleaned. But I want to get things more cleaned in that vicinity before I uh, decide to pull those bearing caps off of there and assess that situation. Anyhow, that about does it for this video, and uh, I think I'll keep you all updated as to, uh, you know, how things go with this machine. Meanwhile, uh, if you like these videos, please do like them. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, there's a place for that, you know where to go. And uh, if you'd like to see more, please do subscribe, and have a wonderful day.